This is Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, the Channelnomics podcast that connects you with channel chiefs, thought leaders, and executives about what it takes to get the next generation of tech to market. Here's your host, Larry Walsh, the CEO and Chief Analyst of Channelnomics. Hey, everyone, as a nice person said, I am Larry Walsh, your host, and this is Changing Channels. I'm probably like you, tired of talking about the pandemic, Um, but it's something that we're going to reflect upon probably for years to come because we experienced so much during this past two years. Uh, and arguably, we still probably have another another one to go, but there's a lot of lessons that have come out of this, a lot of experiences. And one of them is that our really you know, discovery of our reliance on cloud solutions to help keep businesses operating, keep teams collaborating, keep teams uh, communicating. And this is one of the big lessons that come out of the pandemic is that we can be effective even remote. We can still operate as cross-functional teams in large and small organizations, even if we're not physically present or we don't have the ability to come together physically. Um, And and this has really spurned a, a tremendous demand for new types of solutions that enable collaboration and better project management. Now, one of those systems, and if you've been on YouTube like I do, you've probably seen the ads for it, is Monday.com, a really tremendous uh, online project management system. And the person who built their channel program is here with us today because not only did she build the channel program, but she did it coming on board at the beginning of the pandemic and then having to build up a program virtually from scratch with virtual resources. So I will bring in our guest, Sarit Shalmas, the Senior Channel Partner Manager at Monday.com. Sarit, welcome to Changing Channels. Hello, hello. Nice to be here. Hi, Larry. It's good to have you. So, Sarit, I, you know, I want to say that your experience wasn't necessarily unique, but from my perspective, and particularly here at Changing Channels, you were doing two really unique things at the same time. You were starting a new job, Uh, almost at the beginning of the pandemic, the pandemic was still somewhat new, but also given the task of building something new when none, when you could not actually be physically be with your team. So why don't you start a little bit, just tell us a little bit about Monday and then we'll get into, um, into your origin story here, if you will. Absolutely. Sounds like a great plan. So yeah, thank you for this great introduction. And um, you're absolutely correct. I decided to explore the opportunity with Monday. Um, It was probably mid to late February 2020. And as time, you know, came by to interview, things were happening and everything went virtual, as you just described. And it was very overwhelming, right? We didn't know what's happening. And pretty quickly, it was unclear which way's up. Um, it was a big task to undertake, right? Not knowing how partners or potential partners will respond. We already have a lot under our belt in the way of partnerships over at Monday. Partnerships are taken very, very seriously uh, at the company. We're very fortunate to have great leadership who honestly believe in the strength and the viability of working with partners. And they've already had the channel going in other regions, but not in North America. So the U.S. was completely net new, as you described. And we had to start building without the whining and dining, without flying, without seeing people in person. It was it was a big question mark, to be honest, for someone like myself and as all of us listening, right? When you're in channel, you're in, in relationship building. That's what you do. You you build, you manage relationships. How do you do that when everybody's like Zoom and, and Teams and everything around it? So yeah. big, big task. You know, my takeaway from what you just said is, you know, looking back because you started interviewing or exploring February 2020, you actually started in May of 2020. The takeaway of a things were happening. I wrote it down just so I wouldn't forget that. You know, there was a lot. Well, here, let's put this in the right place. Things were happening. Um, 
but it, you know, this is, not, I wouldn't say, I mean, cause in, for everybody listening in, Sarit and I did have a conversation. This is not a new story to me, but I, I always imagine people on their first day in the job. What do you do? You show up at the office. You're usually there a couple minutes early. You know, somebody shows you around, where do you sit? You know, where do you get coffee? Where's the bathroom? Usually in that order. And then you got to be able to like move around and get to know people and get to work. What was it like for you, though, trying to plug into what is virtually a new position where there was no real shared experience or expectations? Yeah, it's a it's a great question, Larry. And I think to to me, I mean, we had a great enablement program. So kudos to the the enablement team over at Monday. We have a very, very rigorous plan. So we had a lot of our cohort with us. Uh, learning the the ropes, right? Understanding how to sell Monday, how to position Monday, et cetera. And we also had a great team over at headquarters kind of walking us around, creating a buddy program so that you have someone to show you around, even if not in person, at least virtually. Uh, they also organized a few events uh, to get people together as a casual lunch, if you will, uh, virtually that is. So it felt Still, like you're with people, but you're on Zoom for nine, ten hours a day, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. We all got really comfortable with this right here, being on camera, where I can remember just a couple of years ago, we had this capability. We just didn't use it. 100%. Totally yeah. agree. <laughs> Yeah. So what was the objective when you walked into this, you know, as you described, it was virtually a clean slate you had here. Um, what was what was the mission that you were given that you had to that you were building around? Yes. So we've seen partners being successful in other regions where we didn't have necessarily boots on the ground. That makes sense, right? Where language is an issue, where the geography needs a little bit more attention. Now, when it comes to the U.S. or North America at large, what gives, right? We all speak English or French in some regions. Um, we have a great sales team, obviously. And then the idea became that we need another layer to support who we are working with and our customer base has ranged, you know, across probably 200 different industries, which is a very, very broad spectrum. We needed partners who obviously can deliver services since Monday as a company and many other SaaS companies are of the same mindset does not offer services in-house. So we needed that muscle. And additionally, we wanted people who convey and relay the same level of professionalism, same Monday culture, DNA, so that the experience, and I'm going back to what you said earlier, the experience for for our customer is very seamless. They know Monday, they know the partner, they can come to the partner since they already had a relationship with the partner or they can come to the partner after they already bought Monday. So that's high level what we're looking at to build a network of very solid, professional, high level people, groups, practices who will then deliver the goods, deliver those projects. And as Monday becomes more and more enterprise, the needs change. And, and that definitely helps having those partners in our court. Yeah. So what was it, you know, can you take us, take us through the process for, for developing this? Because I, I want to get into this a little bit deeper with you because I do recognize what you're describing and others will too recognize what you're describing in that you are a, you are a service, you are a provider of an application, but you're not the service itself. You're not the, the workflow. How did you design the intent in the value proposition for something that is what many would perceive as being a plug and play or what we used to call plug and play. It was it's like click and click and work type of an application. Where, where's the, what was the design, uh, the, the North stars for you? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very, very good question. And one that we grappled with, obviously, as we were building and creating the strategy and the go-to market for our partners, um, it was very clear. It has to be, with a focus on service, right? We needed to know how they would be working with our clients. We needed groups that are already proven 
to have a strong customer base. It's not necessarily someone who is like off the street building something new, but rather groups who have already had an experience, right? They, they have been working for a while. Uh, they're of a certain size. And again, without uh, uh, giving away the secret sauce, I would say that we were looking for specific criteria. Um, and again, not to make it sound all that strategic. It was very strategic, but sometimes as everyone who's been doing strategy for a while knows, sometimes it is throwing spaghetti at the wall, right? Like sometimes you have to go in there and say, Hey, you know what? This looks really interesting. And I'll, I'll give you such an, an example, which I think is one of my proudest, uh, you know, achievements in the sense that it was really a something I tried. Um, I came across a potential partner in a very niche vertical. And I will not name that vertical, but it was a very, very specific IT shop that served a vertical. What was really interesting about it is I started thinking, how could they be using Monday for their client base? Now, Monday, as you mentioned earlier correctly, is an extremely broad platform. It can do many things for many, and you also mentioned correctly, it is an out-of-the-box tool. You can use it right now. If you purchase Monday online, which some people do, you can use it right away. It does not include you know, the necessity for a full-fledged implementation, et cetera. However, it became very evident that the customers are growing. They're growing with us. It is more of a flywheel model. So essentially, they might come for one thing, for a marketing need, and then all of a sudden, they also want to work with their operations or their legal team or their sales team. And so Monday wraps itself around the organization and similarly, the partners um, do the same. So to go back to your question, Larry, I would say that finding those interesting creative ways to find the partners, so for instance, going vertical as opposed to just finding an SI or someone who's been doing uh, tech work for a long time, that was very interesting. And then with regards to looking at, is this an out of the box solution versus do we really need a partner? I think a lot of customers are voicing the need to have someone who's been doing it for a while mm -hmm. to help them convey those workflows that they need to improve or present in Monday. So hopefully that answers the question. Well, that is, that does. It sort of like leads to another one, though, because you you know one of the things. And if anybody has ever checked out Monday, yes, you can buy it direct online. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, full disclosure, Channelomics is a user of Monday, and so and there is no quid pro quo in this in this broadcast. We are just here because we find Sharit and Monday interesting. Um, but I will tell you is that even if we didn't buy through one of your partners. We do look and we did see that there's a need for some guidance, some handholding. How is Monday actually connecting the dots between the users that it does have already or the ones that are contemplating just buying, but then still needs that that high touch support or that workflow design that actually brings out the true value of Monday as a, as a system? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to that, and I just want to give a big shout out to our support team. So they put out not only great support on the ground 24 seven, the works, uh, but also lots of resources. So I think what, what you're saying and we're seeing correctly, we grew up in SMB. So with that, and if you look out there, the numbers are, are out there since we're a public company, uh, we have over 127,000 customers. So put this in perspective, you must have something in place, which is very compelling to address those customers who came to us without having spoken to either a salesperson or a partner. And how do you do that? So you have great customer service, first of all, we're like one would say customer obsessed the customer is the center of our viability uh, additionally we have a knowledge base so if you go support.money.com you can find the answers to a lot of your typical questions um, and then we also do webinars which are excellent ways to kind of get a sense you know either if you're a 
starting um, Monday, like a budding, budding Monday um, user, or if you're already advanced and you've been using it for a while. So we have those that are going on regularly, and you can also watch them later on on our YouTube channel. So you mentioned YouTube earlier. It's all there. Uh, you know, it's, you know <laughs> according to YouTube, we can do anything ourselves now. All we just need to do is sit down for five to 15 minutes <laughs> and just follow whatever the person on camera is doing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I do find, though, is that I think that this one of the other things we've learned over the past couple of years is that not only do we do we have a a true need, a you know, that there's a true utility to these cloud-based applications that we were kind of dabbling with just a couple of years ago that are now mainstream. But there is a greater recognition that design and workflows is that you, you know, like Monday, like something like other applications um, in your class are truly adaptable. They're customizable. You can build into them the way that you want to work but it still requires a lot of process, a lot of workflow thought, you know, thinking through workflows and planning who does what and when. Do you find that that is, there's enough value in that, that the partners can make money or that this is a, a an accretive opportunity for the partners in addition to whatever they earn with you? Well, the short answer is yes. And the answer to the previous uh, mention, you know, some do it, more than others, but I, I would say to your point, Larry, that we are definitely seeing the need for handholding, right? People come to the platform, sometimes they would say, oh my God, where do I even start? I saw the webinar, I did this, I did that. They need that push someone to corral them to get their work done. Sometimes they need someone to give them homework, you know? Uh, they need someone to really walk them through it and also have the best practices so that they're not perpetuating any old issues from their previous system. Because let's think about it. Like, where did they come to Monday from or to any other system, right? They have used notes. They have used Excel spreadsheets. They have used this, that, and the other, many meetings, uh, sometimes perhaps messaging internally, et cetera. But it wasn't enough. So if you came here and you wanted to improve, then you have to take it seriously. Uh, can you do it on your own? I guess so. But if you want some help, if you want someone to walk you through, or if you want someone to really help you at the grand level of the organization, like the way that you would have very clear and clean processes across the board, because if I'm going back to the original statement I made, which is with Monday, we really are a work operating system. So even if you are a mid, large, et cetera, enterprise company, you're able to come and say, let's work smarter across the board, but somebody has to manage this. Like it will not happen on its own, right? Yeah. So that's kind of to answer that question. Yeah. Now you mentioned this, so is it, you know, it's a you know channels are a relationship business when you're when you're building these these go to market relationships that truly often requires you to actually have a touch a trust a collaborative uh, a collaborative type of of motion with them so where did you amid all of this disruption and chaos where did you find these these knowledgeable companies and how did you attract them into this program you built yeah, that's a great question. So maybe I'll just start by uh, what you said with regards to building the program. So the program was started prior to us arriving uh, in North America. And then with regards to how we went about finding those people, I would say it was a two-pronged approach. One was to try completely outbound, completely greenfield, looking at the usual suspects, right? LinkedIn, seeing who do we know, identifying and mapping specific areas. It could be a nice complementary idea to, to go with Monday. So nothing competitive, obviously. We were looking at people who know what they do and do it well and could then open up to working with Monday. That's one area. Um, and then the other area was kind of looking into our, our own Rolodexes, so to speak. I don't think anybody even uses um, that term anymore, but hopefully you will... <laughs> 
indulge me in talking about Rolodexes. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. So for anyone that's under, you know, anyone under 40, a roller dex, you can find the Wikipedia link in the comments below. Uh, but yes, we, not to date act- ourselves or anything. Right? No, no. So you actually are using a Rolodex. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the virtual Rolodex. So, you know, yeah. it's interesting. We all came with relationships. We all had people we knew. And we started kind of tapping into that, seeing seeing what will work. And I, I will tell you right now, in hindsight, after have, having signed the first and second partner, it became much easier. But the first ones were difficult. I will not sugarcoat it. It was difficult. It was cold emailing, stuff I'm not used to. You know, I haven't done this in a while because I was at my previous job for about five years uh, in different incarnations. So it was branching out. We didn't know what those partners looked like, but we felt that we could find them. We felt we will know who they are when we see them. And luckily, I'm happy to say that. We were pretty good at, at finding those that reflect our values and, and serve our clients very, very well. Yeah. So Sarit, I, I, I don't want to say this in a way that, you know, that's offensive, may, offensive to people. Some people may take it this way, but let's face some realities is that the pandemic experience, you know, while it was a hardship for many people in many companies, it was actually a great opportunity for Monday.com because there was a, you were part of the, the, the rush to go remote to enable fluid workforces and people who are physically separated. Now we're beginning to see that wind down. So how do you keep the momentum going? What is the path forward for Monday.com and its partners? Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, question slash statement. Um, I'm not sure it's slowing down, to be honest with you. I feel like hybrid workforce and, and all that good stuff is still here and is here to say that's for sure. And also just going back to the beginning of your statement, I do want to say that while the pandemic definitely accelerated some trends, we were already seeing a lot of pockets and needs for knowledge workers globally to work with system like like ourselves now with regards to what in store for our partners i will say a couple of things first of all we are gl- growing globally so we're keeping that expansion going we have partners in japan now partners in brazil areas that we have not worked with uh, previously so that's on the global scale i will also say something very interesting which is our app marketplace which was launched in june of 2020 if memory serves uh that is a huge area of growth for partners so that is really building on top of monday since monday is a low code no code platform it offers so much value uh, to partners who can then build more and interact with customers that they haven't worked with before yeah so look, I have one last question for you is that, you know, so you're now, you, you're now overseeing a successful program that you l- literally midwifed into existence over the, over the past year and a half or so. So what, looking back on it now, is there anything you would have done differently? Oh, that's a great question. I feel like perhaps one thing I would have done a bit less of is trying to rely on previous networks. I feel like this should be really a clean slate type exercise because it required a different set of partners than what I've ever seen before. So obviously the crutches to getting into a new network is trying to see if all tricks work. Um, I will tell you that that did not work, but I had to validate that in order to know it for myself. So perhaps that's my kind of two cents for my um, 2020 self is just look completely greenfield, look out of the, outside of the, of the box and, and try to meet new people. And I think that's one of my greatest pleasures that I've had uh, during this pandemic. Obviously, it's been a very rough period for everyone. Everybody has to do so many different things, wear so many hats, uh, be a cook, be a, a parent to kids who are learning on Zoom. But at the end of the day, having met such incredible people and help them, help them build, help them 
visualize what they can do with Monday and help them build businesses with us. That is my greatest pleasure. Well, you know what I will say, I'll echo what you're saying is that because one of the things I I really like about monday.com is that you're among a few companies out there that are truly flipping the script on the way that you're working and enabling partners by driving business down to them, as well as opening up new professional opportunities that leads to their own revenue generation. So it's a kudos to you for what you've accomplished here. And uh, Sarit, I really appreciate you joining us here on Changing Channels to share your story. Thank you for having me and thank you for what you do. And thank you all again for dropping by and listening to us here talk about how technology is changing the world. We're tracking how all this is impacting the channel here at Channelnomics. So please keep checking in with us to hear about how we are going to change the world. Until next time, I'm Larry Walsh. Thank you for joining Changing Channels with Larry Walsh, a production of Channelnomics, with the support of our production team at Modern Podcasting. If you've enjoyed today's episode, hit the like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and share with your friends. For more information about Channelnomics services and insights, follow us on Twitter and YouTube, and check out our website at channelnomics.com. Channelnomics is a registered trademark of, and Changing Channels is copyright by, 2112 Enterprises, LLC.